Welcome back to the channel. So today I've got the brand new all electric IX. So it is in Sophisto Grau. It looks a little bit funky. You can see there's some design cues from the i3. This one is our Hea, which is basically dealer first inventory or demonstrator vehicle. So this one's not going to be for sale. We're going to keep this one around to make sure that uh, people get a chance to take a look at it and potentially test drive it. That's not going to happen until March 19th, which is the official date for the launch of the iX and the i4 in the United States market. Well, let's go over as much as we can with the iX. So this is going to be basically a walk around video. We'll have a more in-depth look at some of the new features. It's obviously going to be brand new and a little bit of a learning curve to get to with iDrive 8 and the changes made with the all-electric vehicle. So this has got a dual motor setup with 516 horsepower, and I think it's 564 torques. So more torquey than any other BMW currently made. Not as torquey as an Alpina. And horsepower is not bad. Obviously it's not 600 plus horsepower. But that's going to be coming with the IXM60. So in the United States right now. So right now in the U.S. market, it is only the IX. X Drive 50, no I at the end, available, soon to be joined by the M60. You can actually put those in the order bank right now. I don't know when production is going to start. But up front, obviously, we have sort of the polarizing look. Everyone's talked about it. I mean, look, these kidneys have uh, been on the cars for a little bit of time now. Obviously, one, the criticism here is it's an electric vehicle doesn't really need the kidney girls really, but sort of a distinctive look. So you know what you're looking at when it's coming up on you from the rear. So this one has the adaptive LEDs. It does not have the laser lights. And in the middle, I know it's probably going to be pretty hard to see on video, but there's some little lines here. And that's where the actual sensors are for the vehicle for the autonomous driving and as well as the... Um, cruise control, and that's going to be distance control, cruise control. You see a camera up here as well. So all this is supposed to be self-healing as well. So if you get a little bit of damage on here with some heat, basically leaving out in the sun, it's going to basically heal itself in, I think, 24 to 48 hours. All right, so back and up. So size-wise, oops, I've got the Comfort Access 2.0 going crazy here. So... Here's what the key looks like. So it's a lot different than previous keys. It's a little bit heavier, but only slightly so than the current keys. You can see the buttons are on the side here, plus the lock button on the, as the BMW roundel. Outlined in blue to signify I. So size-wise, it's about the length of an X5, height of an X6, and the wheelbase of an X7. So it's a Sort of Frankenstein monsters view of the SUVs here. And up front, you've got the 21 inch wheels. So the standard, I believe, are 20 inch wheels up to 22 inch wheels, which is consistent with the X7. So the more you increase the size of the wheel, the less range you get. So think with the 21s, it's about 314 miles, I want to say. I'll double check that, put that in the notes as well. And you can see the wheels are aerodynamically designed. Pretty funky design as well. So they're on Pirelli P0s. These are non-run flats. So there's no choice for a run flat tire on the iX or even the i4. You can choose between all season and performance tires. Basically summer tires. So notice the caliper is blue. It is similar to the M Sport brake system, but does not have the M logo on it. So maybe that changes with the IXM60. You can see the roof slopes down, so reminiscent of, say, like the X2. Not as dramatic, of course, as the X6 or the X4. But the wheelbase increase, that's going to be very beneficial to the passengers in the rear. We'll show that to you as well. Move it around back, no exhaust tips, of course. Very interesting design on the tail lights as well. 
show those come up. So they're LED as well. Of course, it doesn't stay on. Oh, a little bit of startup dance there. So, also got this IX, sort of like a floating area here in the C pillar, reminiscent of the I3. So your charging port, it's where you'd find the gas uh, door on any BMW. I'll wait till we get to the trunk to talk about the charging and what it comes with. But pretty sleek design overall. Your opinion may vary, and that's fine. All right, so let's take a look at the inside. The door handle is kind of funky as well, especially the reach in and pull. Here's your sort of startup welcome. And that's what it looks like. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull out the spec sheet here and go over what we have. All right, so the IX, it starts at $83,200. The paint for Sophisto Gray is included in the price. We've got the Stone Gray Microfiber and Fabric uh, Upholstery, so it's 500 bucks. Dynamic handling package, which was required on the early builds, especially if you pre-ordered the car. That's another $1,600. $4,000 for the premium package, which gets you multifunction seats. I'll go over the controls in a bit. An, an interior camera, personal eSIM 5G. So sort of like a Wi-Fi hotspot, but we're using 5G instead. Live cockpit pro with a HUD. And the Saran view cameras as well. Sport package is $2,800. Radiant heating package is $950, so that's going to bring out heat from all over the cabin. So not just the heated seats and, say, the armrests and the steering wheel, but everything about the car. In the front, at least. So it's even fell victim to the passenger lumbar delete. There are other options available. So this one, MSRP, is $93,870. So just go over a quick few things here. There's a lot to go over, and I don't want to spend too much time going over everything. That's going to be a separate video. So your seat controls are have changed. You can notice this one's in the titanium bronze. It does not have the glass um, feature as well. So that can be in glass if you'd like it, or crystal. So reminiscent, of course, uh, to Mercedes-Benz. And your seat uh, settings up here, mod in modern means this is the case right now. But you can see over here, there's a little sort of hamburger buttons here. That means that more information is available in the menu. So if I go ahead and press that, this brings up some adjustments here for the pass or me, for the driver's seat. You can sort of play around with these things here. So you can go use the use the uh, screen to control lumbar support, etc. It's all touch screen, so it's gonna take some time to get used to that as well, especially used to analog devices. Our steering wheel, so Hopefully you can sort of make this out. It's hexagonal. So interesting thing here, but the ergonomics are pretty good. So at nine and three, you have a nice, good place to put your hand. It's not at a bend in the steering wheel. All your controls are up. A lot of the controls are up here for your assisted driving modes, like before, but different setup. Over here, media controls as well. Our roundel with the blue outline. All right, and then our gigantic two screens here. And moving over to the center console. So we got our standard iDrive controller. Our gear selector. So basically just push up and push down, or pull back towards you, I should say. So again, gears, reverse, neutral. D is drive, the regular car. And B is the brake, so one pedal driving on that one. So two pulls down all the way to drive. And then another pull down to B. Now, there's no, you'll notice there's no parking gear here. So in order to put it into park, you hit the parking brake button here, and it'll put it in the park as well. But also notice if you leave it in drive and turn off a vehicle like a DCT, as long as your foot's on the brake, and if you're in drive mode, it will turn in the park as well. Auto hold. So you can see, again, here you got your parking assist cameras. 
up here. So we go ahead and press that. So you get a pretty good view here, normal as, as you normally see. And see over here on the right hand side, this is where the car is going to inform you it's found a spot. So a slightly different setup than before because before it was the uh, rectangle here and the P in the middle. We've got some air suspension as well. And then your volume roller. So that's all set up differently. My modes, you press that, you get into the driving modes. So you got personal, sport, and efficient. Start stop button up here. Now this is a different layout than before. So if you're driving the well, current BMW, you're going to find the home buttons up here. So now that's where it used to be, home buttons all the way to the left. You go here like you're normally used to having a home slash menu button. You're going to hit the telephone button. So it took me a while to figure that one out uh, feel-wise. It's all haptic feel as well. You go into the home menu here. So things are going to be different. Again, I'm going to go over this in more detail in a different video. So you got your menu button, media, telephone, and nav, and nice curved touch screen. So all the information is here. You can add widgets and customize it as well. And then still hotkeys up here. Home, media, telephone, nav. But that's about it. So in terms of storage space in the center console, it's there. It's not bad. So this one's got the Harman Kardon, which is the base sound system on the vehicle. So unfortunately, don't have the demo for the Bowers & Wilkins sound system. <clears throat> I've had the experience of being in the car equipped with the Bowers & Wilkins. It's a pretty amazing sound system. Now, up here, you got your panoramic moonroof with, with no shade on it. So this button here uh, either lets light in or, lets, or blocks out the light. So very reminiscent of the Boeing 787 Dreamliner windows. Let me see. It's hard to see which mode it is in. That's blocking everything out. And that's letting some light in as well. You can see the sun right up there. It's hard to demonstrate out here. All right, and then the other big thing you have to get used to is the door controls. So there's no handle to pull open. It's a button click. And it pops open. You can just push out the door. So here's the microfiber in stone gray look. So the seats are sort of reminiscent of the M Sport seats on the X2 as well as the M235, but very soft and comfortable. In terms of driving, the interior cabin is really, really quiet. All right, so moving to the back seat, there is a ton of space in the back here. So despite it sort of looking short, getting in, you have a tremendous amount of space. It is crazy. So I got the driver's seat where I normally sit. Now, knee room, basically two hands. It's a lot of space. Plenty of leg room as well. And let me just swing this around a little bit. So also plenty of headroom, even with this panoramic moonroof here or sunroof, but amazing amount of space. So space for three passengers back here. So got your climate controls back here. So another two zones in the back, plus plenty of USB-C charging ports. But it's pretty roomy back here. All right, so let's go back into the trunk. So go over here, press the button. Uh, Unlock the door and prop it open. You can see the rear view camera is embedded inside the round down, like it is on the 4 Series. So, you got your cargo cover here. I mean, it's not great space, but it's still pretty decent. You actually have controls in the back, like you used to have on the X5s, with folding down the seats. So, that's what that looks like. It, folds, it doesn't fold down completely, so you have to go around and push it, I presume. All right, so included with the purchase of the iX or the i4, you get a home charger. So it's flexible, fast charger. It's basically, it's the turbo cord for the new generation. So it's got socket for the 110 or 120 volt. It's a level one charger included. Now, you don't want to use a level one. Reason why, 
is that from empty to 100% will take about 100 hours to charge. So you want to be level two, which the flexible fast charger is capable of. So using 240 volt, you're looking at about 10 and a half to 12 hours to charge from empty. And of course, the best way to do that is the level three fast chargers. So from 0% to 80%, I believe it's about 40 minutes. Now, the good thing about the fast charger is with a purchase of a car, either the iX or the i4, you're going to get a pass on Electrify America. Now, what that does is it allows you up to 30 minutes of free DC fast charging for two years. So if you don't have a level two charger access at home, you probably get by, of course, depending on where you are, with level, v, with level three fast charging. Of course, you can also use stuff at work if, the, if your work does provide charging as well. That's a pretty good deal. Two years, Electrify America. Of course, you have to sign up for it. We'll get you 30 minute sessions. Now, I don't know if it's gonna be back to back or not. It's probably some fine details in there that I'm not aware of right now. But 30 minutes of fast charging is pretty good. That's gonna get you most of the way there. Of course, you can use regenerative braking and some other stuff, the efficient modes to charge up your battery as well. But that's it for our, basically a first look at the brand new iX. Customer cars, at least for us, should start arriving first week of April, probably towards the latter part of it, the first week. And then the i4s will be the same. So we'll have a video of the i4. It's going to be a 40i. I should say it's going to be a 40 rather than the M50. The M50 is going to be harder to come by. But that's it, and we'll see you at the next video.